So welcome to another episode of Autogi Fuel with me, AJ. I'm here in Spain on this beautiful day and next to me is this even more beautiful car, the facelift 2017 Seat Leon. I was here last month and uh, at the unveiling of this car, so make sure you go back and watch that video first. But today, we're gonna drive this car and I'm gonna tell you what it really feels like. So are you interested? Let's find out more. Come on, let's go. So at first glance, it doesn't seem like the new Leon has changed too much, but that's kind of a good thing. But where, ha uh, where the changes really are, for example, is the grille. So this grille is now wider and the frame is more three-dimensional and it's a little bit more pronounced than before. And this is the FR trim level. So this is the more sporty trim level. So with that, the bumpers are even more angular than before and the lights are completely new. Um, if you can see here, the LED light is very uh, similar to that on the Ateca and I'll show you later, but uh, it doubles uh, as a daylight, daytime running light as well as a turn indicator light. Furthermore, the Seat lighting, as they call it now, the new LED headlights, are twice as powerful. So here you can see the daytime running lights and now the new LED lights and now the turn indicator lights. So with the new facelift, the Leon comes with uh, three new colors, and this is one of them, the Desire Red. It also has uh, new alloy uh, designs, and this is again one of the new alloy designs. This is an optional uh, rim, it's 18 inches, as standard you get 17 inches. So as we go along the side, um, I really like the Leon's uh, outside rear view mirror. I mean, the shape itself is really nice. And because of, of, of the pointed edge here, it doesn't lead to a lot of wind noise when you're driving. And also, if you can see, I'll show you later when I'm driving, there's a little bit of a gap uh, in the edge of the front window. So when you're driving, you can peer through this gap here at the, uh, for example, the curb or the edge when you're trying to park. So it's a very useful uh, design and placement of the rear view mirror. As you continue down the side, there's a very nice crease Again, very typical of Seat, and I really like this design. And another one coming in from the opposite direction. So it gives a very nice contrast and light, and sh uh, a very sharp shadow here, as well as, uh, you know, it, it gives a very aggressive style to the car. And uh, towards the end, there's a very sloping roof line to make it look very coupe-like. As you can see, this is the three-door version. The five-door version is about 4.3 meters long. And this is uh, about 30 millimeters shorter than that. And there's also the Estate called the ST, which obviously would be longer than this as well. So the full length for the Estate is 4.6 meters. Anyway, here at the back, um, you see you have a small spoiler at the top. And as you go down, uh, again, with this new facelift, the rear taillights are also LED and they're also much more sharper in design. You have the FR badging. Then the bumper, again, for this facelift is redesigned ever so slightly to make it give a much more wider appearance to the car. Because Seat, uh, Seat is trying to um, make this car look really low down and really sporty. So this bumper, you know, if you stand up from the side, it really makes the car look like a sports car. So here we have the key for the Seat Leon. So this is the keyless entry. So now it's locked. As I come close to the door, it automatically unlocks. 
swing the door wide open. It's a very long door because this is the three door version. So obviously this is a very large door. So it has a very long raking window. The materials up here are pretty good. They're hard. And as you go down, then you get more soft touch materials here, as well as here. This is also pretty soft. But the build quality is, you know, what you, we've come to expect of Volkswagen. And it, it's pretty good. You have a nice little storage bin to put your water bottle and your phone, things like that. And over here you have the Seat Sound badging. And down here you have the FR trim logo as well. So now with the FR, you get sports seats. For example, this is one of the sports seats that you get. This is all leatherette, even on the inside, so there's no Alcantara. But again, as leatherette is eco-friendly, uh, we at Autoge Fuel, this car is okay, or the seat is okay with us. And you can see that there are red contrast stitching, which matches the outside color of the car. So it looks really sporty. And here we have the steering wheel. It's got nice grips on the top. It's got red contrast stitching as well. It has a flat bottom and the FR logo is in the uh, the badges in the bottom as well. Okay so let me just hop inside. So getting inside is fairly easy. It is a bit lower. Your seating position is also quite low but that's nice. It gives you a very sporty feel. The seats are comfortable. The side bolstering holds you in place when you're going around corners. The seat is adjustable for height and, you know, all the usual stuff. The steering wheel as well can be adjusted for um, angle, tilt, as well as reach. So finding a comfortable driving position is really easy. So here we are sitting inside the cockpit of the car. It's very black, but I, I think it suits the personality of this car. You have nice glossy piano black finishing around the edges. Again, the shape of this is very similar to the shape of the LED lights outside and the overall you know, design scheme of this car. And um, the infotainment screen, which is now it's eight inches, and I'll tell you more about that in a while, is angled slightly towards the driver, so it doesn't glare and you don't have to tilt your head too far to see it. And the air conditioning vents are positioned up high and they blow air straight into you and not, you know, at your hands. Then the materials up here are good. They're very soft. As you can see, I can even bend them with my hands. And as we go to the side, there's a fairly okay glove box. It's not too, not too big, but you have your CD player there and your SD cards as usual. And overall, it's a, it's a, it's a good place to be. So here we have the armrest. It slides forward and backwards, so you can set it to a comfortable position. Underneath you have some usable cubby holes. We have a shallow one up here, you have a deeper one down here. And let's give it the shake test. It doesn't rattle, doesn't shake, so again, good build quality that we co we've come to expect from Volkswagen. Then down here, there's a 12 volt power socket. There are two cubby holes, a large one where you can put your phone and again this is padded with rubber so if you drop your phone inside it won't bounce around, it won't rattle and you have two beverage holders as well. So when I say Volkswagen build quality, I mean because Seat is part of the Volkswagen group. In fact, the Leon is built on the same MQB platform as the Volkswagen Golf. Anyway, moving forward. Let's take a look at the transmission console. So here we have the electronic parking brake and the automatic function for the same. There's a nice chrome trim around the outline, around the edge. Then this is the shifter for the seven speed DSG that's come with this car. Very sporty, very small with red stitching as well. And here's something really interesting. So the start stop button, which comes with the keyless entry the light pulses like a heartbeat to suggest that, okay, the Leon is a beast and it has a heartbeat and it's asking to be set free. But more importantly, down here, you have a wireless phone charging port. So all you have to do is drop your phone inside and if it's compatible, it starts charging automatically. And finally, 
you have two USB ports as well. So here we have the climate control, dual zone for left and right. You have the automatic button for that. You have seat heating and defogger buttons here. Then you have the driving mode selectors and you have the auto shut off and the hazard light. So now let's take a look at the new infotainment system. First of all, this is, the, this is an upgraded system and it comes with eight inches. So on the home screen, you have a bunch of different clocks that you can choose from, then you can turn them on. So this is a short key function for the full link. The full link is a very new important feature for the Leon. We've seen it before in the Ateca, but basically you can connect your phone uh, or your, any other device via USB and through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you can control a lot of functions using your phone. For example, you can import audio, you can import images, so you can set the pictures on your phone as background, or you can set them as caller ID pictures, things like that. You have two other hotkey function uh, buttons on the top. This one is to go to the menu, the home button, and this is a direct uh, shortcut key to the full link. But one thing I noticed while driving, um, again, this is very similar to the Volkswagen uh, navigation system, but in order to zoom in and zoom out, you really have to put a lot of pressure. And if you don't, you start getting these little pop-up boxes, which, is, can, which, which can be annoying when you're trying to drive. And you know, you cannot zoom out or zoom in with the knob. That's just the volume. So you are forced to do this. And as you can see, sometimes if you don't push hard enough, you end up just you know getting that pop-up which can be which can be a little bit annoying but apart from that the new upgraded system is very good so let's take a look at the instrument cluster so we have two analog diodes for the tachometer and the speedometer below that on the left you have a temperature gauge again this is digital and i mean first of all nobody really checks their engine temperature that often so it's fine but along with the speedometer, you have a digital fuel gauge. And sometimes I find it a bit tricky to understand. I mean, once, you're, once you own the car, you, it's very easy to understand. But you can see that there's just lights uh, which depict the level of fuel in the car. And, you know, it kind of looks the same as the lights around the, the outer ring of the dial. So it could be a bit confusing. But anyway, that's just a minor niggle. Then in the center, we have a screen which has a lot of useful information for example it gives you driving data um, the assistance systems now this car has a lot of assistance systems it has for example the lane keeping assist as well as um, pedestrian safety high beam assist emergency assist these are all options but and it's interestingly using a combination of the lane keeping assist as well as adaptive cruise control the Leon also has what they call the traffic jam assist. So what this does is in its slow speeds, when you're in a traffic jam, it monitors the car in front of you. So it maintains the same distance using adaptive cruise control. So it starts, stops automatically. And with the lane keeping assist, it steers the car for up to eight seconds along the lane. So you can basically let it drive semi-autonomously when you're in traffic. Very useful feature. Moving forward, apart from that, you have the navigation so you can set the basic navigation commands you won't get a map but you will tell you okay where you have to turn off next and distance to the next uh, junction and things like that pretty useful you have your audio controls as well as telephone so the new Leon also comes with a new interior lighting system this we've already seen on the Ateca now it carries forward to the Leon so the interior door design is a little bit different as well. So they've incorporated these LED strips at the top and you can change the brightness of these colors. And more importantly, you can also change the color itself. <laughs> In all honesty, this doesn't have any practical use, but it's really fun and it lets you personalize your car even more. So let's take a look in the back seat. So the front seat tumbles down, there's a very easy latch. It slides forward, giving you, all right, adequate room to get inside. It's 
it inside, pull the seat back towards myself, and hmm. So I am five foot eight. That's 1.7 meters. I have the seat set to my driving position, and as you can see, knee room is okay, but there's not much under thigh support. In fact, the rest of my uh, my legs are just hanging out, so it's a bit uncomfortable. And I cannot really slide my feet under the seat as well, so it's a bit cramped. But that that's expected of a three door. But uh, there are air conditioning vents, there are armrests, there are isofix points on the two outside seats. There's the center armrest with cup holders, also doubling as a ski hatch, and the entire back seat splits, uh, falls in a 60-40 fashion. So let's take a look in the trunk. So. You don't open it from here. I already tried that. That's the rear view camera, but you do it from up here. So you push the Seat logo up forward and then lift the latch and the rear hatch opens up. So inside, well, it's not very big, but then again, this is a three door car. So you can expect, to, expect it to be this much. And as I showed you earlier, the seats fold down. And in this position of the floor, they lie completely flat. But if you want, you can put it down and then it gives you a little bit more volume. But then you have a larger lip, a much larger lip in that case. And unfortunately, you don't have any latches in the back to tilt the seats forward. So you're gonna have to go to the front. And remember, you're gonna have to go to the front, slide the front seat down, then go into the back and then flip the rear seat. So it's a little bit of a hassle. But apart from that, down here, you have the spare wheel and the subwoofer for the Seat sound system. So just to give you an idea of how large the trunk is, we can fit two small suitcases very easily. And there's space for even a third one, a backpack, and some small nicks and knacks. So now let's take a look under the hood. So the Seat Leon has a wide range of petrol and diesel engines, starting off with a one liter three cylinder turbo petrol, making 115 horsepower. You have a 1.2 TSI, a 1.4 TSI, and a 1.8 TSI like the one you see here, which makes 180 horsepower. The diesel engines are the 1.6 TDI, which makes either 90 horsepower or 115, and then a 2 liter TDI, which makes 150 or 184 horsepower. Now these cars come with either the 5-speed manual or a 7-speed dual clutch automatic transmission. So if you spec the bottom entry level version, the Seat Leon starts at around 15,000 euros. And if you have the FR trim with the 1.8 TSI like we have here, it goes upwards of 26,500 euros. All prices in Germany. Okay, so let's take a spin in the new facelift Seat Leon. So Spanish car on Spanish roads. How fitting. Hmm. So first of all, let's talk about the seats. I think the seats are very comfortable. They're not too stiff. They give me good lumbar support, good under thigh support. So you can use this car for long distance driving as well. No problem. Um, so I've been driving uh, before we started filming already and the steering wheel somehow doesn't agree with me. Maybe it's just me, but I find that it's a bit too light. It doesn't really self-center and it's a bit vague. Even if I turn the uh, driving mode and put it in sport mode, you know, I can feel it becoming a little bit heavier, but for some reason, I don't feel like it's giving me enough feedback. But apart from that, the steering wheel has a really nice grip and I really like that it has a flat bottom steering wheel. It makes me feel like a boy racer. And everything about this whole Seat Leon has such a, you know, a sense of occasion about it because it's so invigorating in so many aspects. And 
The other driving modes that we have are, for example, Eco, Comfort, and Normal. In Eco, the engine uh, maintains a lower RPM and the gearbox maintains a higher gear. So this helps boost economy. The throttle response is dulled ever so slightly. So the sharp acceleration is, uh, uh, you know, it helps, the lack of sharp acceleration rather helps to improve the efficiency. So on the trip computer, I'm seeing 9.5 kilometers, uh, sorry, 9.5 liters for 100 kilometers, which is not too bad, considering this is a 1.8 turbo petrol. And again, with uh, very, very varied driving uh, situations. Apart from that, well, the suspension. The suspension is pretty compliant. It's stiff enough so that around corners like this, it gives you a stable and flat uh, cornering ability. It doesn't have too much of body roll. And on slightly rougher sections of road, it still manages to soak up the bumps quite well. Another important thing uh, that makes this car suitable for long distance driving, like I was mentioning earlier, is the sound insulation. Seat has really improved the sound insulation for this uh, facelift version than the previous version. So it really shows it's a lot more comfortable to be in, not just with the suspension. And another interesting uh, point that I want to mention is that the position of the outside rear view mirror like I mentioned earlier, because it's slightly closer to you and not at the far edge of the door, there's a little bit of a gap between where the mirror starts and where the end of the window is. So that little gap right there lets you peer through if, you have, uh, if you're trying to park. You don't have to necessarily uh, rely on the, the parking assist, even though that's very useful. You can still peer through that little gap to get a good idea of how close you are to the edge and uh, things like that. So that's a pretty good, pretty good feature. Not sure if they intended it to be that way, but all's well that ends well. With the 7-speed DSG, you get fairly good throttle response, especially in sports mode. I put it back into sports mode now. You just can't help yourself with the Leon, especially with this FR trim level. I pretty much had it in sports mode the entire time. So the throttle response is fairly good. The engine doesn't shift down, uh, sorry, the gearbox doesn't shift down unnecessarily when you're on the highway and you want to overtake. It does so if it really needs to, which is good because a lot of times I notice that, you know, even with a slight dab of the throttle, the gearbox, most, not most, some of the automatics immediately shift down, which is quite unnecessary. But if you want a more engaging experience, you have paddle shifters, so you can drop it down and then you can hear the engine a lot better. Throttle response is obviously a lot more crisp and sharper and it really makes this car come alive. But yeah, I think they could improve the steering feel a little bit more. It really has too little weight in my opinion and it feels very artificial maybe it's not just the weight oops <laughs> maybe it's not just the weight it's the it's the it's the feeling of the weight it doesn't feel natural it feels too artificial mm. I mean it's elect electrical uh, electric powered steering like pretty much every car these days but perhaps there's some way they can recalibrate it so I'm going to turn around really quickly and now is a good time as well to check the turning radius so at full lock, it can manage a fairly tight three-point turn. You have a rear view camera, which helps you, uh, you know, check the edges. But the system overall isn't too complicated. Like usually you see when you turn the wheel, the lines, the guidelines on the rear view camera also turn. This doesn't do that. It's very fixed. Seems a bit 2010, if you know what I mean. Um, but you have front parking sensors as well, which you can activate at slower speeds. Let me show you, like that. But um, there is no 360 degree camera.
So if you don't want to use the paddle shifter, you can also use uh, the gear shifter itself. All you have to do is flick it to the right, and then one push up will shift up, and one push down will shift down. But it's always more fun, at least in my opinion, with the paddle shifters. I have a dead pedal for my left leg, so again, very comfortable, not much stress on my thighs. This car also has adaptive cruise control, so at high speeds on the highway, you can just leave it be. And this also has um, lane keeping assist, so it actually will turn the wheel ever so slightly for you. So if you put it in adaptive cruise control, and you're doing long distances on the highway, you're driving across country, across state, then first of all, you shouldn't be driving for too long. You know, that's unsafe. But even if for a minute you're distracted or you kind of get tired, the car is there to support you. He's got your back. Apart from that, let's see, the visibility is pretty good. Visibility out back is also quite okay. Um, again, because this is the three-door version, the rear roof line is very sloping. It dips down quite sharply. So I think it will be much better in the five-door version. But regardless, this is still much better than a lot of three-doors. Again, because it's based off of the Golf, which we know is a very practical car, even a sporty iteration of that, like this, will still have some of that inherent practicality. So let's summarize. The new Seat Leon, first of all, it has drop-dead gorgeous looks. It has a range of very powerful and uh, economical engines as well. It has decent interior quality and overall has a very good uh, price value proposition for the customer. A couple things that I don't really like about the car. Well, first of all, the steering wheel is a bit too light and a bit too numb, even at high speeds. And the navigation takes a little bit of getting used to. But overall, this car is really good. So please let us know what you feel about this car and put your comments in the section below.